Okay. Uh, welcome everyone to the Pi Day edition of the Schubert Seminar. We're happy to have uh, Wei Hong Xu, ex Law Ryu, uh, from Rutgers University. Uh, Wei Hong is a student in Rutgers, a uh, graduate student in Rutgers. Uh, and she's going to tell us about uh, quantum K theory of incidence varieties. Please go ahead. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. And special thanks to Anders, who has been very helpful throughout this project. Um, let me put the slides in the chat, just in case you want to look at it during the talk. Okay, you should have it now. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself at any time. Here's the plan for today. First, I will say a little bit about the background and introduce our objects of study. Next, I will state the main geometric result, which I will then use to compute some geometric invariants on the incidence variety called T equivariant K theoretic Gromov Witten invariants. These invariants are closely related to the equivariant quantum K theory ring of the incidence variety. Knowing these invariants means we know how to multiply in this ring. In particular, I will state some very explicit formulas, namely an equivariant Chevalet formula and a non-equivariant Littlewood-Richardson rule. Afterwards, I will revisit the geometric result and say a little bit about its proof. In the end, and if time permits, I will also state a conjectured Chevalet formula for the quantum K theory ring of an arbitrary type A flag variety. Here is the setup. Let G be a complex semi simple linear algebraic group. As usual, we will fix a maximal torus T inside a Borel subgroup B inside a parabolic subgroup P. And we will let X be the flag variety G mod P, which naturally admits a G action. In type A, G is just SLCN. P can be taken to be the subgroup of block upper triangular matrices with some fixed block sizes. B can be the subgroup of upper triangular matrices and T can be the uh, diagonal matrices. For this talk, it's fine to just think about type A. We will fix an effective degree D in the second homology group of X. And we will write MD for the conservative moduli space of genus zero three-pointed degree D stable maps to X, which is just the compactification of the set of maps from P1 to X, such that the push forward of the fundamental class of P1 is equal to D. Here, this compactification means we are allowing for degenerate maps whose source is no longer P1, but a tree of P1 with three marked points. These maps need to satisfy a stability condition that if a component is mapped to a point, then there are at least three special points on the component, including nodes and mark 
points. The moduli space MD comes with three evaluation maps, EV1, EV2, and EV3. On the interior, they are just given by evaluating F at 0, 1, and infinity on P1. Schubert varieties are sub-varieties of X that are stable under the action of a certain Borel subgroup. We will consider different Borel subgroups because we want the Schubert varieties to be in general position. In particular, we will use lower indices to index Schubert varieties that are stable under the standard Borel B and upper indices to index Schubert varieties that that are stable under the opposite Borel B minus. If B is the subgroup of upper triangular matrices of SLCN, then B minus is the subgroup of lower triangular matrices. Um, um, let me draw a cartoon picture. So in X, we have XU and xv. We will consider the two-point gromov wheaton uh, variety MD of xu, xv. It's the sub-variety of MD consisting of maps with the first mark point sent to xu and the second mark point sent to xv. When we take the image of a degree d stable map, we get a degree D stable curve. And if we take the union of all the degree D stable curves meeting XU and XV, we get the two point curve neighborhood gamma D of XU, XV. It's the sub variety of X given by the image of the two point Rome of Wheaton variety under EV3. If we do this with just one Schubert variety, we get the degree D curve neighborhood of that Schubert variety. It's not hard to show that this will again be a Schubert variety stable under the action of the same Borel. Here is everything we need from T equivariant K theory for this talk. First, let's recall the non equivariant K theory. So, the ordinary K theory ring of X is the free abelian group generated by isomorphism classes of algebraic vector bundles on X modulo the equivalence relation given by short exact sequences. Multiplication is simply given by tensor product of vector bundles. In our case, X is a non-singular projective variety, which implies every coherent sheaf on X has a finite resolution by uh, locally free sheaves. We can use such a resolution to define the class of a coherent sheaf as this alternating sum inside the K-theory ring of X. And this definition is independent of the choice of the resolution. Pulling back vector bundles along the structure morphism makes the K-theory ring of X an algebra over the K-theory ring of a point. And structure sheaves of Schubert varieties and opposite Schubert varieties give two bases for the K-theory ring of X over the K-theory ring of a point, which is of course just a Z. Now, since T acts on X, it's natural to consider the free abelian group generated by T equivariant vector bundles on X modulo the equivalence relation given by T 
T equivariant short exact sequences. Again, we can define multiplication using the tensor product, and this gives us the T equivariant K theory ring of X. There is a notion called a T equivariant and coherent sheaf. I will not give the technical definition. We just need to know two things about them. The first is that they come with finite resolutions by T equivariant vector bundles. And just like before, we can use such a resolution to define the class of an equivariant coherent sheaf in our equivariant K-theory ring. The other thing we need to know about equi equivariant coherent sheaves is that whenever we have a T-stable subvariety, its structure sheaf will be T-equivariant. In particular, Schubert varieties and opposite Schubert varieties are both T-stable. So their structure sheaves are examples of T-equivariant coherent sheaves. Just like before, pulling back along the structure morphism makes the T equivariant K theory ring of X an algebra over the T equivariant K theory ring of a point. The T equivariant K theory ring of a point is also known as the representation ring of T because a T equivariant vector bundle over a point is just a T representation. Since the torus T is commutative, every irreducible representation is one dimensional given by a character epsilon. We will write C epsilon for such a representation and its class lives in the representation ring of T. Just like before, Schubert classes and opposite Schubert classes give two bases for the equivariant K-theory ring of X over the equivariant K-theory ring of a point. Gromov-Wheaton invariants are closely related to three-point Gromov-Wheaton varieties. These are sub-varieties of MD consisting of maps with the mark points sent to three Schubert varieties stable under different Borels. Let's assume that these Schubert varieties are in general position. Then the cohomolo cohomological Gromov-Witten invariant simply counts the number of points in the Gromov-Witten variety if this count is finite. In case the Gromov-Witten variety has positive dimension, the cohomological invariant is zero. The K-theoretic Gromov-Witten invariant computes the sheaf Euler characteristic of the structure sheaf of the Gromov-Witten variety. So when the Gromov-Witten variety is zero dimensional, we recover the cohomological invariant but the K-theoretic invariant can still be non-zero even when the Gromov-Witten variety has, fine, uh, has positive dimension. The K-theoretic invariant can also be computed by pulling back, um, pulling back Schubert classes via evaluation maps from the K-theory ring of X to the K-theory ring of MD, multiplying them and then pushing forward to the K-theory ring of a point, which is Z. Since everything is T equivariant, we can soup this up to get the T equivariant version of the K-theoretic Gromov-Witten invariant, which lives in the equivariant K-theory ring of a point 
aka the representation ring of T. To recover the non-equivariant case from the equivariant case, we simply need to set all the equivariant parameters to one. Of course, we are very interested in computing these Gromov-Witten invariants. Note that it suffices to compute the Gromov-Witten invariants defined by Schubert classes because these invariants are linear in each entry and the Schubert classes form a basis for the equivariant case k-theory ring. These invariants are relatively well understood when x is co-miniscule. Co-miniscule varieties are a nice subclass of flag varieties. They have Picard rank one, and in type A, they are just the familiar Grassmannians. A result of Buch, Capu, Mihalchi, and Perron says that, that when X is co minuscule, the restricted EV3 from a two point Gromov Witten variety to the corresponding two point curve neighborhood is cohomologically trivial. This means that the push forward of the structure sheaf of the source equals the structure sheaf of the target, and all higher push forwards of the structure sheaf of the source vanish. In K theory, the push forward of a class is defined as the alternating sum of the classes of higher push forwards. Therefore, when a map is cohomologically trivial, the push forward of the K-theory class of the source, oops, is just the K-theory class of the target. As a corollary, we get this nice formula that says equivariant K-theoretic Gromov-Witten invariants can be computed in the equivariant ordinary K-theory ring of X. Unfortunately, when X is not co minuscule, this nice quantum equals classical formula doesn't always hold. Here is a counterexample from a paper by Book, Presch, and Tanbakis. In the full flat variety FL5, there are two rational curves of degree D equals 2, 3, 3, 2 passing through three general points. This means the Gromov-Witten invariant associated to three points is equal to two. Now, since a degree D curve uh, meeting two general points can reach a third general point, this two-point curve neighborhood is the entire flag variety and this K-theory class is one. So the right-hand side is just computing the sheaf Euler characteristic of the structure sheaf of a point, which is one. Here, the formula fails because the restricted EV3 from the two-point Gromov-Witten variety to the corresponding two point curve neighborhood is a two to one cover, which is not cohomologically trivial. However, when X is of type A and one of the Schubert varieties is a divisor, we still expect the restricted EV3 to be cohomologically trivial. This is a conjecture of Buch and Mihauchi. What I did was considering the simplest type, type A flag variety that is not co minuscule, namely the incidence variety. The incidence variety is a special two step flag variety. It consists of 
pairs of vector subspaces of Cn, u comma v, such that u sits in v, the dimension of u is one, and the dimension of v is m minus one. Taking out the u gives us a point in the projective space, and taking out the v gives us a point in the dual projective space. And this incidence relation translates into this equation where x1 through xn are the coordinates of cn and y1 through yn are the dual coordinates. In the g mod p description, g is slcn and p is the subgroup of upper triangular matrices with, uh, sorry, uh, block upper triangular matrices with three blocks sized one and minus two, one. Um, Schubert varieties in X stable under some fixed Borel are indexed by W upper P. Um, this set consists of pairs of unequal integers between one and N. It sits inside the vial group as minimal coset representatives of W mod the vial group of P. Um, so yeah, so each, each element in W upper P corresponds to a Schubert variety and an opposite Schubert variety. They are both, they are each given by the vanishing of some coordinates. Containment relationships of these Schubert varieties are governed by the Bruja order on W upper P, which is inherited from the vial group W. For example, the element uh, 1n is the smallest element in W upper P, and x lower 1n is just a point, while x upper 1n is the entire x. There are two opposite Schubert divisors, which we denote by D1 and D2. They are cut out by X1 equals zero and Yn equals zero, respectively. And their classes generate the Picard group. Finally, we will simplify notations for Schubert classes by dropping some square brackets and some letters in this way. Our main geometric result says that the general fiber of this restricted EV3 is rationally connected. You can think of the general fiber as the set of degree D stable maps with the first mark point sent to a Schubert variety, the second mark point sent to an opposite Schubert divisor, and a third point sent to some fixed point that is as general as it can be. Using a result of Kalar, this implies that the same map is cohomologically trivial. As a corollary, we get the same quantum equals classical formula, except that one of the Schubert classes comes from a divisor. Note that the right-hand side is very easy to compute because what is this two-point curve neighborhood? Well, when the pairing of the degree D and the divisor DK is positive, every curve of degree D is guaranteed to meet the divisor DK. So this two-point curve neighborhood is just the curve neighborhood of the Schubert variety, which is again a Schubert variety. When the pairing of the degree D and the divisor DK is zero, every curve of degree D is either disjoint from DK or contained in DK. So this two-point curve neighborhood is the intersection 
of the curve neighborhood of the Schubert variety with the divisor dk, which means we need to multiply the corresponding k-theory classes. And in this case, we can compute using Lienard and Posnikov's Chevalet formula for the equivariant ordinary k-theory ring of x. In order to state the final result, I need to introduce a little bit of notation. Recall that W upper P is the set of pairs of unequal integers between one and N, and it is the indexing set for Schubert varieties and Schubert classes. As it turns out, our formulas become much simpler if we index Schubert classes and degrees at the same time. This can be achieved by extending the set W upper P to the set W upper P tilde, which consists of pairs of integers that are not congruent to each other mod n. Each such pair ij has a unique reduction mod n i bar j bar, um, which live in, lives in wp um, with the property that i bar is congruent to i, j bar is congruent to j. What we're doing here is nothing but a shifted version of taking the remainder. By keeping track of how many copies of n we need to subtract from i and how many copies of n we need to add to j to get our reduction mod n, we can also recover a degree which lives in the second homology group of X, which is Z2 in our case. When we write a gromov wheaton invariant, we will suppress the degree by allowing the index of the last Schubert class to vary in WP tilde. So doing reduction mod P, uh, sorry, doing reduction mod N to this index will recover the degree and an actual Schubert class. Again, T is the maximal torus of diagonal matrices inside SLCN, and we will write epsilon I for the character of T that records the i diagonal entry. Here is what we get for the equivariant gromov wheaton invariants if we actually carry out the computation using our quantum equals classical formula. And as a corollary, the associated three-point gromov wheaton varieties have arithmetic genus zero whenever they are non-empty. This can be seen by specializing these gromov wheaton invariants to the non-equivariant case, which amounts to setting these equivariant parameters to one. We see immediately that the non-equivariant invariants are either zero or one. And when they are zero, it's not hard to show that the corresponding gromov wheaton variety must be empty. Therefore, when the gromov wheaton variety is non-empty, the, the sheaf Euler characteristic of its structure sheaf is one, which is the same thing as saying the variety has arithmetic genus zero. Um, I think this is a good place to take a break. Please let me know if you have any questions. All right, very nice.